All right, I'm gonna do a quick video trying to help anyone who's trying to swap their gas three quarter ton truck to a diesel. I wrecked this diesel truck and instead of fixing the two wheel drive, I wanted a four wheel drive. So I found the V10 truck and I'm currently swapping my engine and transmission over to it. The I'm using the two wheel drive transmission, but I've listed the parts that you need if you're wanting to convert from what I could find but I'm splitting my overdrive unit off of my transmission and putting the one off the 47RE that was in the V10 truck over onto mine. I'm gonna cover my list of parts that I have wrote down so far. And we'll start with the radiator. You'll need the one out of the diesel, of course, the fan shroud. I believe you can use the V10 one, but it doesn't have the spot for the overflow to hook into it. But I just found a, um, I found one off a diesel parts truck. Um, you'll need the intercooler with the parts to mount it to the support. And <clears throat> um, the hoses to, that take it to the engine. The four couplers and the two solid hoses. You'll need the external transmission cooler, the AC condenser, the core support, or fix yourself. I'll cover it real quick. This is the core support for a V10. The intercooler mounts to these holes here, which do not have a welded uh, nut into them or a thread insert. The Cummins ones have a thread insert. You can fix that yourself. I just found this one off of a different parts truck and I'm gonna change it. The power distribution center with all associated wiring. It runs all the way into your cab it runs up to your wiper motor. It's all your brake and accessories here, or your, your brakes, your cruise control, um, everything. Down here, there's a couple of grounds, and your headlight harness all the way over to the other side. It it's all together looks like this. It's not as complicated as some might think to unhook all this, but I will cover this grommet is where it runs in underneath where the brake and throttle pedal is. Um, this big plug and hooks with a with a bolt in the center, real easy to get to. There's these two plugs, and then these two were the ones that were a little tricky, still not hard, but they plug into the fuse panel that's in the door jam. And this the tab to depress them to pull them is actually out facing toward the driver's seat, um, so like so, and you you depress it. It's a little hard to see, so maybe that'll help some of you out. You, of course, you'll need the diesel exhaust. You'll need the fuel lines. Even though I have an air dog with a sump system on this truck already and I'm gonna use my tank, you'll still need the fuel lines. Um, not necessarily the supply, but you've got a return fuel system that runs to the sending unit. It's easier just to take your fuel lines off your tank and run them, run them with the, uh, run that whole assembly together rather than tapping in a, return, a different return line. Um, fuel sending unit, you'll need it. The instrument cluster for a diesel, you'll need it as well. The vacuum lines. So everything <clears throat> on the Cummins actually runs off the vacuum pump, which is located right here by the power steering reservoir. There's the actual uh, fitting for it. So you'll have a whole vacuum harness that comes off of that that actually ran, runs um, vacuum to run your cruise control. It runs your, um, it hooks in here to work your blend door actuator and whatnot. It runs down to your transfer case on a vacuum harness. And um, it runs several things on this uh, four wheel drive. It runs your whole, your vacuum harness down here. It runs through these metal lines and uh, actually locks in your differential, I believe. But you'll need the vacuum, the whole vacuum harness. Uh, it was actually a uh, four, uh, I'll walk over here to the four wheel drive transmission and show you. So 
this is kind of the whole vacuum setup. That's what hooks into your transfer case. But it runs a little bit of everything on both engines. It just hooks to a different spot when you do the diesel swap. Hooks into the back of the intake. So this is all a vacuum harness. <clears throat> and on a V10, it actually hooks into the back of the intake. But on the diesel, you've got to run all your vacuum lines off of that vacuum pump. So a different location, uh, try to find the harness if you can. And you can make them probably custom if you needed to. Um, you'll need the second battery tray. So if your gas, your battery's sitting here, a diesel's got Diesel's got two batteries, so of course you'll need another battery tray. Um, you'll need the whole hydro boost assembly off of here. Um, just try to save y'all some time. You got your four 15 millimeter nuts that bolted up under the by the brake pedal there. You can get to with a long extension. And this has a little clip you've got to pull off, and this actually pulls away. It's not a pin that you can remove. This just pulls off of like a a, a pin that's got a lock and clip on it. Power steering lines, of course, you'll need the ones for the Cummins. The, uh, the gearbox itself appears to be the same. Throttle cable. You'll need the throttle cable, which comes out here because it hooks to the diesel engine different. Um, super easy to take off inside. Um, and then it just pops out there uh, from the inside. It's got little plastic tabs that you squeeze in to remove it. And um, I've covered transmission a little bit. If you're going automatic, I'm using my old transmission and changing the overdrive unit. But if you use the gas one, you can convert it, but you'll need torque converter, valve body, and, uh, and the TV cable off the old one. But I believe that covers everything. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will respond to them as I can.